Hey everyone, welcome to Coffee and Darts. I'm your host, Matthew. Uh, we've got an exciting guest today. I'm really excited to be able to sit down and talk with him about darts, darts reviews, and all the fun stuff that uh, goes on in the darting community. But first off, I want to thank my sponsors. Of course, I want to thank Shot Darts for sponsoring the show. Uh, if you're looking for some incredible, intricate cut barrels, some fun barrels, or if you just want a nice, feeling barrel in your fingertips check out shot darts at shotdarts.com they've got all your barrel needs there and for really cool jerseys super comfortable jerseys that you can play 18 hours in and we're about to find out if we can play 24 hours in a particular jersey you're going to get those over at magic wear so check out magicwear.com and stay tuned for next month when jen mounts from magic wear joins us again to talk more dart stuff but Let's get into today's interview, and I'm going to bring on Adam White from Darts Planet TV. Hey, Adam, how's it going? Uh, good, thank you. How are you? You all right? Doing, doing good. Doing good. How are things on your side of the pond? Oh, well, we're, um, we're going through a heat wave at the minute, so everyone's grumpy and moaning that it's too hot. Good old the English attitude, but um, I like a bit of heat, so I'm quite happy with it. So, uh, I noticed. I noticed you were at the beach the last couple of days. How was that? Yeah. Yeah, I was quite lucky. My my boss, uh, he's quite a nice guy. He said, uh, as we're having a heat wave, have a couple of days off. So I've been at the beach for the last couple of days, yeah, trying to top up the tan. So it's been lovely. Nice. Well, that's good. I wish my boss would let me have a couple of days off just because it's hot. <laughs> so if anybody doesn't know who Adam is and hasn't seen Darts Planet TV, Adam, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, you know, what do you do in darts? Um, I know you were mentioning that you play with um, Jack over at Darts Referee, um, but also just kind of maybe a little bit about Darts Planet TV and how it came about. Yeah, well, um, Darts Planet TV is owned by uh, Gavin Rookyard, Gav, um, and basically get, uh, Gav, um, he basically, his wife was quite poorly and um, he wanted something to sort of take his mind off, always worrying about it and things. So he's he's an absolute darts fanatic and he set up his own darts YouTube channel and it's just growing and growing and growing all the time. Um, and I got sort of invited along um, and uh, got asked to do a few videos with him and we sort of done a few funny videos and then I started doing the dart reviews and then... Um, from that, we sort of grown it. We, we we did one show with Raymond Barnevelt. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys saw that, but um, that was a very popular show. I think it's had about three hundred thousand views on YouTube now. That show, so uh, yeah, yeah. So well, that's great. Um, get us in a little closer here. Yeah, I've been a fan. I've been watching Gavin since he kind of started about two years ago. Um, like I was mentioning to you, the first video that I ever saw uh, was the one where he was putting up a dartboard that he had just gotten a new dartboard. He and his son were, uh, you know, putting up a dartboard, trying to get it level. And that was the first one I saw. And I kind of started watching him. And it's yeah. been, the growth has been really fun to watch. You guys are doing everything over there. I mean, there's a magazine, you've got the interviews, you're doing reviews. What's your kind of specific role there? Are you like mainly just doing uh, the oh. reviews or is there other stuff you're doing? So, um, I do, uh, we do a Sunday night live stream show, um, which we invite guests on um, and we have uh, just basically it's a, sort of an hour on a Sunday night where it's a live stream show, but we give away prizes as competitions run. And it's basically like a fun hour really, where sometimes people come on and challenge me to a game of darts. And if they beat me at a game of darts, they'll, they'll win a prize and things like that. Um, and also i do the dart reviews as well um and we pretty much have got signed up now majority of uh the sort of main big name dart companies that you guys would have heard of um they send us their products for us to review and things and that's where i do most of my work for dptv where i'll review the products so um, very nice yeah. very nice so like you had mentioned prior like we were we were talking a little bit you made a comment at once about reviews and not yeah. necessarily liking them but is that what drove you to do reviews where you're like hey i'm gonna do something a little bit better than these dry 12 15 minute reviews <laughs> it's like i said to you earlier i did it, it kind of came out wrong and i got a bit of stick for it and i think a few people sort of took a dislike to me 
basically, um, it was really it was a passing comment. Um, Gav, we I, I actually had gone round Gav's one evening and we were having a barbecue and we sat in the garden and and um, we just got chatting about different things that we can do for the channel and different things that we can put on. And um, Gav just said, "What you know." Like he said, he'd like to do dart reviews, but he doesn't really know enough about darts. And obviously at the time I was a county darts player and playing five nights a week. And I've been involved in darts since I was a kid. Um, so he was like, would you do it? And I said, well, let me have a look online and see what other people are doing. Because what I didn't want to do was copy anyone. And I didn't want people to think he's just doing what we did. And I started watching all different reviews online. And as I said to you earlier, I've got a really bad attention span and I kind of get bored of things quite quickly. And I found people were just sort of talking too much for my liking about the darts. And I said, surely we could make this sort of fun and like have a laugh with them and show people the dart and throw them and that'll be it. And so we sort of set a time limit of five minutes of video. I crack a couple of jokes. If I get a 180 with them, jackpot you know brilliant and that's about what we do really so oh very nice i i'm probably one of those dry people <laughs> that, uh, you know i i at first uh, honestly i was trying to do measurements and i was trying to do weights and i'm like nobody really cares about that stuff at least yeah there are people that care but in reality you know you're gonna play with the dart you're gonna know if you like it or not um yeah. you know it's kind of an instant marriage you'll pick up a set and be like this is this is gonna work for me but so I've tried to change it up, but I still, I, you know, I need to do that. I need to get my, my videos down to like that five minute mark. So, yeah, well, this is it. Cause Gav, that was one of the, the first day I turned up to do the reviews. Gav actually did have a set of scales there and he had like a little ruler for measuring them. And I said, what, well, why do I need those? And he said, well, to measure the dart and to wait. And I was like, but it says it on the box, you know, and I was, I was like, you know, we don't, you know, and if, if the dark companies a mill out or half a milligram in weight or something, I'll forgive them. It's fine, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. You, you got to give a little leeway in that. So, yeah, yeah I was yeah. doing that at first and then I've kind of gone away from it. Um, but I like your reviews. They're fun. There's always a little bit of fun to it. I love the shirt, you know, bringing yeah. sexy back to darts. Um, you know, I or making darts sexy again, I think is what it says. But yeah. uh, I like what you guys are doing. So, Okay, so you start, you know, you hanging out with Gavin, you know, he's growing the channel, you come in to do reviews. What's been what's been the funnest dart to kind of review or get your hands on? And what's been one of them that you were like, uh, I'm not too happy about that? Uh, um, I think to be honest with you, the best ever day was um, it was when Raymond Barnevelt announced his retirement from darts and target darts rung us up and said look we're, we're releasing a limited edition set of his darts um and we need you to review them but we're not letting them out of our sight because no one's seen them yet and it was the barney legacy darts yeah. so i had to go to target headquarters where they put me in a room where i wasn't allowed to like take any pictures of anything it was like really strict and then they gave me the Barney darts and um, Gary Plummer himself, who owns Target Darts, was in there as well, showing me them. And um, yeah, I got to review the Barney darts um, pretty much before Barney even got to see them. And I was holding them in my hand. and I actually held the number one set, the, the first set. And that was a pretty big deal. I thought that was great, really. So, yeah, that's the best ones. Nice. Um, try and walk out with those like. Yeah, <laughs> I did. So, well, I said to uh, Gary Plummer, I said, normally at the end of review, I throw them. Am I allowed to throw these? And he went, absolutely not. <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't. <laughs> so, I was, um, I was here, take a look at them. You can touch them. Now put them back. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, put them back. Yeah. But that was a good day. Uh, the worst set of darts, the set that, um, yeah, I couldn't throw them. I couldn't do anything to them, was the Simon Whitlock darts. Um, because normally in a lot of my reviews, I sort of throw them okay. But the Simon Whitlock darts, it was like, I turned to Gav and I was like, this this isn't going to happen. I can't throw them. I mean, I couldn't, I was missing the board and all sorts. It just it was, it was awful. Um, but we managed to get nine good darts thrown. And I was like, that's it. Turn the cameras off. I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> so. Two hours later. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's an interesting barrel that he throws. Uh, the push point is just really 
it's just not centered anywhere. It's really weird. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they look cool. I mean, they look really nice. But I, yeah, I've had trouble throwing them. I, I want to throw them because they look so cool. But yeah, I can't. Well, that's it. the thing. People, people will buy them because they look cool, and they'll think, well, he throws them all right, so maybe I can. So no, people will buy them, and um, you know, I mean, like, and that's the thing. Kids watching it on the TV, they'll ask their mum and dad for a set of those because they yeah. look cool. So all's good. Yeah, they look like little javelins. So yeah, they're nice. Well, and what people don't get a lot is if you watch him throw, he throws from the front of the barrel. He doesn't use yeah. the the back of that barrel. So where he has that indentation on the barrel, that's the back of the barrel for him. And he's yeah. throwing. That's his little back push point. And so the yeah. rest of the barrel is just there for weight. Um, yeah, you know, they're hard. That you have to be a front thrower to to really do anything with those. But they look cool. So. Yeah. yeah, it's one of the things I tell tell a lot of people with darts. Um, I think a lot of people think you know, like I remember uh, the most sold dart uh, a couple of years ago was the Gary Anderson dart when he won the world championship, and then the following year the most sold dart was the the Phil Taylor dart when he won the world championship, and then Van Gogh dart. And I think what people kind of need to realize is just because that guy throws them amazing doesn't necessarily mean they're going to make you amazing you know you've got to find a set of darts that you like and suit you and then you can make them amazing you know and that's what people kind of forget sometimes they just want to throw whatever the world champions throwing don't they so which you know i mean there's something to that or at least owning that that yeah. bit of history which is cool but i so i used to play a lot of uh golf my first real job um in the world was i used to do demos with golf clubs so i would just hit golf balls all day long with these demo clubs at courses and let people play with them and i would see people hit balls and they'd hit them okay and they go spend three four hundred dollars on a new driver and i'm like in two months you're gonna hate this club um it's kind of the same thing with darts is i see people buy darts constantly because they're like oh at this barrel i threw once with it and i really liked it so yeah, yeah. But. Do you know what? There's, there's a lot of similarities with um, uh, golf and darts, actually, for, those, for exactly that. I mean, my brother's a really keen golfer, and he changes his clubs about as many times as I change my darts. He's always, you know, but he always goes back to the, you know, like I do, I always go back to my set of darts I've always played with, and he's got a set of clubs that he's always played with, you know. Um, so, yeah. I think the only person that can make that multiple change thing work is Peter Wright. Um, yeah. you know, I don't think anybody else can change five or six times in a match and still make it work. So, but he, he just, I mean, I've been lucky to have met Peter quite a few times. He, he lives just up the road from me. Um, and he's just amazingly good at darts. So <laughs> he can throw, he can throw a 12 dart leg with any set of darts. It's as simple as that. He's just a natural talented guy. Um, and I think that's in his head now that it doesn't matter what he throws. So if he does think, but uh, these darts aren't working today. It won't affect. He'll just change, and, and and that's fine if it works for him. And it well, it's working all right at the minute, isn't it? So ah, he's yeah. got a world championship. I don't. So <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just waiting. I think what he's going to do now is he's going to have four or five pairs of glasses with different colors and variations, and he'll just change yeah. those throughout the match. <laughs> yeah. No. He did say, didn't he? He wasn't going to change anymore, but I think he's changed since he said that, hasn't he? I don't know. <laughs> uh, he did during summer series. He changed. Uh, he changed mid match. I think it was in the semifinals on one of the days, day two or day three or whatever it was. And then of course we saw him pull the glasses off and play. So, uh, but he's he's an amazing guy. I, I've met him. I uh, had an opportunity to meet him a couple times out here in Vegas and spent a few uh, minutes with him. He's a great guy. What was yeah. Barney like, though? I've always wanted to. I want to know the younger Barney, and I want to know the older Barney. You know, but what was? You guys got to spend a day with Barney and play darts. What was that like? Yeah, that that was that was um kind of surreal, really. I mean that um so um yeah uh, I uh, sort of sat there and still didn't believe it until he turned up. I sat in the garden and. Um, Barney walks in the back garden. Hello, how are we? And all happy and chatty. And um, then he sort of said, should we have a few games of darts? And me and Barney just practiced darts together. And he was showing me his practice routines. And I don't know if any of you guys saw it. We all played him at one leg, which we were recorded. Um, 
and I left tops to beat him and he went out and uh but that's not a bad one, is it? I'll tell, I'll tell everyone that. I left double top against five-time champion of the world. That's all right, you know. <laughs> that's, that's a good call. So, yeah, if you guys want to see that interview, you guys can find it. Uh, let me just add this here. If you guys head over to um, YouTube, of course, go to Darts Planet TV. There's just a slew of videos. Uh, these guys are putting out videos consistently every week, um, and you'll find that video. I was trying to find it here. I, I looked at it the other day because i was like oh that's right barney was on there um it's on here somewhere just look through you'll find yeah. that video uh it's pretty cool uh that one right there so you got the chance to play with barney who else have you guys had an opportunity to kind of mess around with um well um there's quite a few things in the pipeline there's a few players lined up um which i can't really say much about um but there's a few guys that are interested but um you know, I mean, I've been quite lucky um, through darts. I know a few of the players from years ago when I used to play. So we've got like, you know, uh, the ex-world youth champion, James Hubbard. We've got a young up and coming PDC player, Ryan Meikle. He says that um, he's going to come on. But I mean, I get to play darts with Ryan uh, locally as well. Um, and and also obviously Chris Mason, uh, who commentates now, but ex professional He's heavily involved in the channel as well, always coming on and doing a few little cameos. Um, and then our young little super sensation, Leighton Bennett. Um, I, funny enough, I've had a few games on the channel against Leighton as well and got thrashed every time. <laughs> he's yeah, too he, good, that kid. He, Phenomenal he's amazing. Player. So um, I like watching the young players. I've got a six-year-old who loves darts um, and just wants to play darts all the time. So. I'm hoping he's my ride to the PDC because I'm never going to get there. Yeah. So I kind of just want to ride his coattails and yeah. someday, maybe. We'll see. But uh, a question in regards to Barney. So you got to play with him. What's your thought on him actually making a comeback? Do you think that's real or is that just a little bit of news out there? I, well, funny enough, um, one of the things kind of when the cameras were off and we were just chucking darts and drinking cups of tea and chatting away i did say to him i said you're surely going to miss all this you're going to miss playing darts and he, he generally said no he said you know he said i don't have a home anymore i live in hotels he said you know he's, he wants a home now you know somewhere we could, you know and he said like um you know he spent the last 20 30 years just every weekend at some darting event somewhere and he's just looking forward to doing nothing i think and i think it'll still my shop be Maybe he'll make the appearance at the odd the charity event and things like that. But I think he's just looking forward to doing whatever he wants to do now, I think, to be honest. Um, but he's still yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, I've, just, I've seen the news clips, but he's been out of it for a few months. I can yeah. imagine most, most everybody, if you've done something for a number of years and you get away from it, you're still going to have that pull, the desire to kind of do it again. Yeah. But I will say it was... I was saddened by his last year. Um, I know he did it right after Phil Taylor, which may have not been the best thing because Phil, one, was still playing top darts yeah. uh, that year that he retired. And it's hard to go out the year after the best player in darts. There's, there's no even argument about that. The guy who really brought darts a huge way – um, he retires and then to retire after that, even though Barney is a five-time world champion and he's, he's an amazing gentleman from what I've seen, you know, living in America. But I, th I just kind of felt, I felt saddened that it wasn't as great uh, an exit for him as it could have been. Yeah. I mean, it was almost kind of, I always said this. I remember I put a, I put a little post on social media when, cause obviously Phil retired at the worlds, didn't he? When Rob Cross won the title and I kind of I sort of said this kind of it felt like kind of a passing the torch moment you know Phil had still got to a final to say to everyone I'm still I'm still the boss around here but this young lad is coming up the ranks I'll, he can have this one and I'll walk away you know and uh, whereas Barney kind of he didn't really get to have that goodbye did he really you know he lost early doors in the worlds didn't he um and I think maybe he might regret some of that. And maybe in a year or two or even less, he might think, do you know what? I want to, I want a better goodbye. I might come back and have another go. Who knows? Yeah. 
I know I've seen it in the news. I also know that his last year, there was some turmoil from personal things. So maybe coming back, maybe he's had enough of a break. He can come back and, and the darts will be there for him. I would love to see him, you know, win a couple tournaments, maybe another TV major. And that's how he retires out. He goes out on top like Phil did. Yeah. Um, yeah. But to be honest, it's hard to do what Phil did. I mean, to go out on top is very difficult. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, Phil Taylor, I mean, he's, he's his birthday today, isn't it? I think he's yes. 60 today. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, and he's still, I mean, I don't know if you see there's a few bits and bobs they've been doing um, over the past few months, because obviously with lockdown and COVID and everything going on, darts has been very limited. So they've kind of dragged Phil and Barney out back out and they've been doing some online darts at home and thing. And Phil's still mixing it with all of them. You know, I mean, there's just some great legs of darts. I, I think I saw a great leg of darts between him and Martin Adams. It was unbelievable stuff, you know, two guys in their 60s showing us youngins how to play it was brilliant you know so yeah it feels I, I, you know i as a darts player over in america of course we look at some of the pdc players and, and 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 we watch that i watch it every weekend my son watches it with me when it's on um you know watching phil it was just always so much fun especially the last three or four years that he was playing but I'll say that match against Rob Cross was something I had watched darts. And, and that year I watched more of the world championships that I had previously. And that match right there solidified for me the I will take three weeks off work from now on so that I can watch the world championships. That was just such an incredible match. Uh, it was one for the ages. And I'm, I'm happy I got to see it. Um, have you gotten to play with Rob Cross or, or you know, had an, an introduction? I mean, he's a he's a uh, I was gonna say shot player. Sorry, sorry, he's a target player. Um, yeah. Have you had the opportunity to uh, meet him? Yeah, I played. Um, so it was uh, funny enough. It was the year of the UK Open qualifiers uh, when Rob Cross qualified for the first time at the UK Open qualifiers. Um, he came to the Norwich qualifying rounds um and he i played him in the last i think it was last eight or last 16 last 16 i think actually um and i no one knew who was in the room no one knew who this guy was uh one of my friends actually ran the draw for the day so he was organizing it and he said to me he said the guy you've got next he's winning all his games four five nil every time he said no one's got near him yet like you're gonna have to concentrate and play well and um we walked up on the hockey shook hands and i think he beat me four nil with a 12 dart leg 11 dart leg 12 11 something like that and i literally turned and i was just like mate i don't know who you are but we're all going to find out pretty soon you know and yeah oh, phenomenal and um yeah and then i remember he did an interview saying that he wasn't even going to go that day he said that his uncle or family member like, dragged him there to say, look, play. And then obviously qualified for the UK Open from there at Norwich. And uh, the rest is history. Year later, world champion, isn't he? So, Yeah, he's, his story is amazing. And yeah, his uncle was his, the one that pushed him to, to do the darts. But his story is, you know, that's one that anybody can look at. And get, if you're good at darts, and you've got to be good at darts, you know, mm. just you've got to be able to throw an 11 dart leg. You got to be able to throw 12 dart legs. If you're that good, his story is what propels you to go to the next level. So yeah, I, I always loved his story. I like how, you know, who he is and, and, and I'm glad that he won the championship, you know, that he was world champion. I think that's great. Um, I've always had this perception that it was too soon. It was awesome. Yeah. Because the struggles, you know, the, what comes with being a world champion, you know, the, is so much. There's so much media attention. I think that hurt his game. And I'm hoping, really hoping that next year we'll see him flourish again and just be a top player. Yeah, I think um, he's kind of, I think it's a bit, it's quite hard for him, isn't it? Because obviously he came from almost nowhere to then within, what, a year to 16, 18 months. He's, he's world champion. And... Um, so obviously now, you know, he's scaled and he's gone to the highest you can go. So now every time he 
drops down, people are like, oh, was he a one-hit wonder? Was well, he good enough? And all that. And I think, I think for him, really, I mean, he's always going to be world champion, isn't he? And I think I'm sure he'll win another one as well. He's too good not to, really. Um, it's just about sort of climbing back up and finding that hunger again, maybe, you know? Yeah, and I think we see a lot of uh, darts players that do that. They peak, you come down a little bit, and then you got to crawl back up. Yeah. Um, what's your thoughts on Gary Anderson? Do you think Gary's got one more in him? I always use the word enigma for Gary Anderson. It's, I think that is the perfect word for him. I mean, he's he's almost a bit like, do you, I don't know if you guys over there in the States follow much snooker, but I kind of associate Gary Anderson and a snooker player called Ronnie O'Sullivan because kind of Ronnie O'Sullivan he's this snooker player who basically if he wants to win and he can be bothered to and he practices he will win and I kind of sometimes get that impression with Gary Anderson I think if he he kind of sometimes just thinks oh I'll see how they are but other times when he's hungry and wants it he tends to win doesn't he and I think I think for Gary it is finding that hunger really because he's got young family as well hasn't he and stuff so yeah, I watched him win uh, in Vegas two years ago, and you could tell during that tournament that he was. You know, there were, I think at first he was like, oh, "I'm just here to have a good time," but then he won a couple of times, and and he was, you know, getting to the semifinals. You could tell at that point he wanted that tournament. So it was fun to watch him win. He's a great darts player. It's one of my favorites. He, I, I, I. I think he's one of the most naturally talented, like gifted people. It, it, he just makes the go. When he's playing well, there isn't many who can make it look as easy. Maybe him and Adrian Lewis are the two for me that make it look so natural and so easy, the game, when they're playing well anyway. so Yeah, and if anybody hasn't seen, uh, there's a video out there, um, the House of Arrows, I think is what it's called. It's uh, Gary Anderson winning his second world title. He goes back to back. Um, watch that video. The joy on his face. Um, it'll just, it'll drive you to want to play darts. Um, yeah. it just how happy the joy, just where he was at that time, uh, with his game. And of course his son came shortly after that. And then you know, the family situation with that question, family, this is what I've been saying about MVG. I like MVG. I, I love his story as well as being the next, you know, that prodigal son of darts. Um, but now that he's got the family more than one kid. It seems like maybe darts isn't as important that that killer instinct that we saw three years ago, four years ago, isn't there as much. I mean, do you feel the same way? I think I kind of, I kind of look at my own life and, and I think what they must be going through. I mean, I remember when I had my kids and they were young, the last thing I kind of wanted to do or felt the energy to do was to go and throw darts five hours every day and in the evenings and all the competitions i mean i tried to but i didn't do a very good job of it um and obviously these guys are doing it on a higher scale and i think i think as and i mean there's a few of them going through it because adrian lewis it kind of it's, it's too many coincidences you know gary anderson's dip in form comes with the family van gerwin's dip occasionally with the family adrian lewis's dip has come with the family and they, i think as their kids grow up i mean they, you know, they're young enough and good enough to dominate for m many more years, and they can even have a break if they wanted to. You know, they're that good. Yeah, yeah, and they're young enough. Um, I look at like Peter Wright, who's who's getting up there in age. His children are up there, and and that's when he really came back to the sport and mm. is a, just a dominant force. Um, so maybe it's time to take a break if you have kids, and then come back later. <laughs> I think my ex-wife would have wished I did. <laughs> well, and I'll, I've got toddlers, so I've got a, a four-year-old that turns five soon and a six-year-old, and in doing videos, so doing reviews with toddlers around, I have to do them at nighttime. I have to wait. Yeah. I can't live or do anything until they go to bed. Um, so I can understand for anybody out there with toddlers that's trying to do something, it's difficult. It's tough. Yeah. So. Um, okay. Gerwin Price. Let's talk a little bit about Gerwin Price. He is by far my second favorite darts player. Um, I love his story coming from rugby and, and picking the game up. I know he's been playing it, but really picking it up at a high level fairly quickly. Um, any comments on Gerwin Price? I know uh, you guys have uh, – I think you've reviewed his barrel. I'm pretty sure I saw that one. 
Um, yeah, we um, I reviewed a couple of sets of his barrels. We've done a couple of sets of his darts. Um, yeah, threw them, threw them okay as well. I think it was one set I threw really well, and I sort of jokingly in the video sort of called out Gerwin and said, right, I'll take you on with your own darts, Gerwin. But he, d he didn't accept the challenge, so maybe I threw them too well. I'm not sure. But, <laughs> um, but to be honest, Gerwin, um, I haven't actually ever met him or even spoke with him. However, I've got friends that have, and they all say he's a great, great guy, like a really great guy. Um, and he just gets pumped up for matches. And I think you're going to see more and more players like him. It's not a case of Gerwin doing it to put people off necessarily. I think he just, the adrenaline for him, and perhaps coming from a sport like rugby, where you get that release of adrenaline and no one really says anything. Um, perhaps with darts, we'll have to get a bit more used to it and stop the moaning, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think it, I think it's good for darts. I think his, his attitude is good. Um, and then, of course, we have this young crew that's coming up, you know, Nathan Aspinall, uh, you know, Dancing Dimitri. I mean, these guys are, are really showing what the younger class has to go with. Um, I love Nathan Aspinall's barrels. Uh, yeah. Really nice, sharp-looking barrel, and I'm excited to see him. I, I think he's got a world championship for sure in him. I had him down as my, my sort of uh, outside bet for the match play. I said I fancied him to win the match play that's just gone. Um but yeah, he's a great. I think yeah, he's t again. He's another one who's almost. It's, I know we say this about quite a few players, but he's kind of too good not to win one. His time will come if, as long as he keeps playing how he is and progressing, he will. He will get that little bit of luck that gets you over the line, and he will win a big one, no doubt about it. Yeah, I think so. I think he's 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 time is due. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Michael Smith because that is my son's all-time favorite darts player. He and Peter Wright. So my son will go back and forth. Um, but he plays the the uh, Michael Smith barrels. Be, you know, the, he didn't want the Peter Wrights. He wanted the Michael Smith. So that tells you a little something. But have you had a chance to to ever meet? I would love to meet him. He seems like just like the big teddy bear, uh, kind of like yeah, Ava Lewis. Lewis. No, I, have, I haven't actually met Michael. Um, but uh, we've, we've spoken a couple of times on social media and things like that, but I've never actually uh, met him. But um Again, like I say, I've got a few friends that play on the tour and they all say the same thing. Great guy, lovely guy. And they all say he's a freak, how good he is. They said it, it's ridiculous what he can do on a dartboard. So I think with him, he'll, he'll, I think he potentially could be the next one to dominate. It's just getting over that line again and winning a couple, winning one. And then I think when one comes, I think we might see quite a few from him. He's, he's, he's so good. So naturally good, anyway. He is. He is. He needs that killer instinct, though. He needs that. Yeah. I've got you. I'm going to crush you, which is what MVGs had. That's why he stayed number yeah. one. Is when well, you're down, thing, he's going to step on you. Yeah. The thing with MVG is he kind of not like Bristow used to years ago, but MVG kind of walks in the room and he's like, "I'm beating all you lot today. I'm going to beat all you. Everyone in this room. I'm beating you all." And, uh, that, and I, as much as all the other players maybe think it, they don't say it. Whereas MVG is happy to say it. And then kind of he's already in their head, isn't he? You know, like, I'm beating you today. It's not a problem. And, uh, you know, and kind of already halfway there, isn't he? You know? Yeah. He gets he gets in their heads pretty easily. And, and his game his game backs it. I want him to grow his hair back out, though. I want to see what that <laughs> looks like. Yeah. I remember there's a video, isn't there, of him winning... Is it the Winmore Masters when he was 16, 15, 17, whatever it was? And he's got this, he's half the size that he is now, isn't he? Tiny little slim guy with this big blonde hair. And uh, yeah, and then sort of, I always take, I always laugh with my friend James, my friend James Hubbard. Because obviously James won his world youth title at the O2 Arena against MVG. And after that, James played in a few televised events and sort of slightly drifted away. I mean, James has done a, an interview about that saying, you know, he kind of felt a bit hard done by, didn't really get looked after right. But MVG went away from that final and then he kind of had some quiet time. He went away and then he came back and it was the monster that is we know now. And I always, every time I say to James, like, you created that. <laughs> you know, it's because of you, you know, that's why. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, and, 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 and it probably was because MVG just – you can see when he lo- – like he lost in uh, Las Vegas a couple years ago when Gary won. And I was – I don't remember where I was coming. I was coming down and I saw him and, and his wife and his, his little one at the time. And like he wouldn't talk to anybody. He was pissed that he lost. He was yeah. mad. And the next week he came back and he won. Just he gets it in him. That's what I love about him. You know, he's a winner, isn't he? I mean, people kind of confuse it sometimes. There's a difference between arrogance and confidence, and he oozes the confidence, and he's a winner. You know, he genuinely believes he's the best, and no one can touch him. And it kind of, you know, I think a lot of us amateur dart players maybe wish we got a bit of that mentality to push our game on more. You know? Um, yeah. Yeah. I want to bring up Cadby because um, Cadby was a target guy. Cadby um, is talking about coming back, getting his tour card again. Of course, he gave it up. Um, and if anybody doesn't know out there, just go look up um, Cadby, Darts, uh, Corey Cadby. You're going to you're gonna find a great young player that just – I think he, he hit the limelight a little too soon or a little too hard. But what's your thoughts on him coming back? He's, he's – he's, um, well – it would be box off was box office stuff if uh, perhaps a Corey Cabri Gerwin Price in a Premier League or something one day. I mean, with I don't know if uh, filling up one of the stadiums like uh, the O2 or something with ten thousand people in there screaming and those two going at it, that would be well be better than a boxing match, I think. Um, yeah, he's um, he's a fantastic player. I think to be honest with you. Um, he just maybe needs an arm around the shoulder and someone to kind of look after him a bit, really. I mean, I don't really know what happened and why he disappeared. Um, but all the news is and the gossip is he's coming back and he's ready and round two type thing, having another crack at it. So hopefully we'll see a lot more of him and people will maybe just look after him a bit better. Um, yeah, I, I saw an interview with him and he he mentioned that it just it, it was too much, it was too much too yeah. fast. Uh, but his management team stood stood beside him and told him to just pull back. Um, I think giving up his tour card may have been an an error, but at the same time, now he has to fight. He's got to fight like just everybody else to get back, and I'm excited to see him come back. Uh, I think it'll be cool. There's some good players um, now coming through from uh, Australia and New Zealand and uh, that neck of the woods. I mean, really, I mean, we've had, was it Tony David, the world champion from years gone by? Obviously, Simon Whitlock, um, and that's been kind of it from Australia. But now, all of a sudden, there's quite a few players coming um, from down there that are uh, sort of turning up and being pretty good. So there's obviously good t- talent down there. So yeah, there, there, um, there's definitely some good young darts players that are that are making the the scene. And I think as the money becomes something, and as darts grows in popularity, it brings people into the sport. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping that we can see a couple Americans, some of these younger Americans that are that are playing well, um, get into the mix and really make this an, an international real play. Uh, I'm excited about that. I've always said darts is the equalizer. Um, everybody stands at the same distance. Everybody's throwing yeah. at the same dartboard. You have every ability like anybody else to win. Kind of like Fallon Chirac. So I want to bring her into the mix. I want to bring ladies into the mix. What's your take on women playing PDC, uh, playing the men? Um, I see it as a good thing. Just curious what your thoughts are and, and how it should work out. No, I think um, I think it's all you know. There's never it's it's always been the World Dart Championship. It's never been called the Men's World Championships. It's always just been the World Dart Championships so that anyone can enter. Um, and uh, I think it's great for darts. I mean, I've kind of feel a little sorry for Lisa Ashton because in my head Lisa's the best lady player on the planet but she doesn't get anywhere near the attention that Fallon does but Fallon timed it right she won the game in the world she, you know so she's more than entitled to the attention and good on her because she's really she's changing her life you know I don't think she's necessarily working as much now because darts has basically become her full-time job I I'm guessing. Um, and yeah, good on her. She's changed her, changed her stars, isn't she? You know, she's making a really good life for herself now. So, And she's yeah. good. 
Yeah, she's good, and she's good, and um, it's good for her. I will say, Lisa Ashton has her tour card. Fallon does not. So yeah. Lisa, unfortunately, this mm-hmm. year because of COVID, we didn't get to see what a uh, a lady playing the men on a consistent basis would look like. So I'm I'm excited. I mean, she still has her tour card. So I'm excited to see what happens when this all lifts and we get to see her really play. I think I saw something on the other day. It was only only caught the corner of my eye on social media, but I think they are now going to do a PDC Ladies World Series or something like that. Um, so and I think that would be four quite tournaments. Good yeah, they're doing yeah. four tournaments so the women can get into to play into for the World Championships, and mm. I think it's a good start for the PDC to start doing that. Uh, yeah. It's gonna well because with the BDO basically defunct, uh, there's no place for the ladies to play. So yeah, uh, and in all honesty, really, the the uh, in my opinion, anyway, um, the BDO's like saving grace was the ladies players because they had the best ladies in the world, and um, unfortunately, I you know. There's not in. There's no incentive for the ladies. I mean, Fallon pulled out of the ladies' world championships, didn't she? Because yeah. you know she could have earned more money doing an exhibition down the road than she would have done winning uh, the world title. And I know a lot of guys will say, you know, a world title is more important than money and things, but paying the bills and having a roof over your head is more important than a world title, isn't it? So <laughs> you know, so you can't really blame them for what they did there. Yeah, and I, I you know. People that are coming into the sport, I don't think understand. Um, just because you're playing professional darts doesn't mean you make a living playing mm-hmm. professional darts. It's still an, an outlier sport. It doesn't have that much money into it. It's gaining. I mean, the World Championships definitely. You know, we're going to see that. We'll, we'll see the the winner get, you know, five hundred thousand euros. Um, I don't know what that is in dollars. You know, in, in the next year or two, I think that's happening. So, it's gaining, but. Even um, Marvin King, uh, Marvin King, sorry, um, you know he was he. There's pictures of him delivering packages during the the COVID thing because let's be honest, darts as great as yeah. it is doesn't always pay the bills. Yeah, Marvin. Yeah, he was he was uh, working for Amazon over co- uh, over lockdown because yeah there was no darts on. So um, yeah. And I mean, Mervyn's been a top what sixteen, top thirty-two player for for a long, long time, um, and you know he still needs to make ends meet. So, yeah. So you got to love the sport. You really got to love the sport. Your top six, seven players probably make a living doing mm-hmm. darts. Maybe your top ten, but um, you, you know it's it's not the it's not football. Whether you're talking soccer or football in America, you know. But it's gaining grounds, and I'm excited to see where that's happening. I know here in America, we've got a couple new leagues, so to speak. We have the uh, CDC, uh, the Darts Championship over here, which the PDC is backing. So we're seeing yeah. growth. So I'm excited about that. I do have a question in regards to people like Phil Taylor um, and that older crowd um, of Darts players. I think the PDC needs to do like a legends tour and have like five tournaments uh, a year for the legends. Uh, we yeah. can see Bobby George come back. We can see some of these guys come back and play. And, you know, I want one here in America, of course, because I want to go see these guys. But I think having like a five tour legends type thing, what's, I, I'm just curious. I always ask everybody, what do you think of that idea? No, I love that idea. I mean, I, I'm lucky enough to know Bobby George and have played darts a few times with Bobby. Um, he's, he, he, you wouldn't need anyone else in a room for an evening. He, 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 he could talk the room away and the tales he can tell about darts. And the, but do you know, the biggest thing I learned from him was um, how to play the game, like shots out and different ways. He just had a different way of, you know, kind of like, a lot of the outshots and ways we see play, people play now, he was kind of the first to start doing that as opposed to the traditional, you know, when someone goes a double-double, they want 100 and they go 20 tops, tops. 10, 15 years ago, you were a show-off, you were arrogant, you were, you know, no need to do that. Whereas he was kind of one of the first to start saying, well, no, that's that's actually easier and makes more sense to do that, you know, and 
Um, but he's a great guy and um, love him to bits. And yeah, I mean, if you could fill a room with him and Phil Taylor and uh, I mean, my favorite from years gone by was a guy called Cliff Lazarenko. I've uh, had a few nights out with him and he's brilliant fun. He's a great laugh. I don't know if you guys can remember Big Cliff. But yeah, there's so many of these old legends. It'd be great to see them come back and have a tour. Yeah, I would like to see Wayne Martle and Bobby George in the same room together and give them each a mic. And just <laughs> that would be, yeah, that that would be that would be that would be worth watching. That yeah, I don't. I no would, else I would pay money for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've kind of talked about this a little bit because we see these younger kids. I can say kids because I'm old. But these guys coming in, you know, Aspinall and, and, and this younger crowd, they're fit. They look good. Um, you know, they, they seem to be maintaining themselves. Um, do we ever see the PDC have like a, a, a workout trailer for these guys, you know, that, that goes around the tours? I know some of the other sports do it. Do, do you think that happens? I know, that, I mean, the slimming down seems to be the new thing in darts. Well, I think it kind of. I think where it's clicked for a lot of players is, um, you know, a pro tour event a weekend or on the Thursday or the Friday, you know, you're playing your first round games at like 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. And then you're still playing sort of sometimes come into the evening. And I think it kind of clicked with a lot of players that, you know, they were, they played brilliantly for a couple of hours and then they'd have a bad game and they kind of realized it was fitness. You know, if you get tired through the day, you know, if you are, really overweight and not looking after your body and stuff. And if you got, cause obviously a lot of them do drink and if you're only drinking and not eating, then come your third or fourth round, you're not the same person you were when you played your first round game. So I think a lot of them have genuinely, I mean, Aaron Monk, I think he does like a lot of working out. He's always in the gym. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of them are now cottoned onto. They do need to be a lot fitter to last, last day or the weekend as such. So, yeah, and, uh, you know, those, some of those tournaments are really late at night. And if you've been drinking during the day and not maintaining a good meal type basis, you're going to get tired. Your arm's going to get tired. So. Yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously, that mentality is still there for a lot of the players. I mean, I don't think it like, – a lot of them say it's not as bad as it used to be, and I, I believe that. But knowing some of the guys that are there and what they drink, I know there's still plenty of drinking involved. And um, – but it, most of it is, it's down to nerves. It is like, it, it's how they combat, combat the nerves. And yeah. there's nothing to say they can't, so. Yeah, I don't know many darts players that are really good when you stick a mic and a camera in front of their face. Um, yeah. Most of them are pretty shy. So. Well, there's no, there's no shyer dart player than Peter Wright. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I'm sure you'd have found out when you met him. I mean, like I say, met Peter quite a few times and he, he it's hard to get a word out of him he doesn't talk he's genuinely a really really shy quiet guy he'd rather sit in the corner out the way and then all of a sudden you put a set of darts in his hand and we've got the hairstyle and the colors and he's out on the stage jumping around it's bizarre it's bizarre but he says that is how um you know it's one of the ways that he deals with the nerves and how he helps it and obviously a few snake bites because snake bites a drink that we drink over here as well. So it's, uh, yeah. Liquid courage always helps. <laughs> yeah. So, well, and I think his wife, I think his wife, I, as a team, they do really well. Uh, I think that yeah. world championship is theirs, and he treats it that way. He'll be the first yeah. one to tell you he wouldn't be the man he is without his wife and his family. Um, and that's another thing I love about darts is, all these players, whether you're a pro or not, um, th there's that understanding of, of what a community darts is and what the oh. family is all about. Um, I'm actually using darts because our kids have to stay home for school. We're, we're doing homeschooling right now. I don't know when that's going to end. But we're going to start doing um, math with our dartboard. Yeah. So my son is phenomenal. He, he could call games. He literally took a day. He, I've got a couple grand boards. I put one in his room because I got tired of him messing with mine. And he, he literally took a whole day and just pressed sections and figured out what the scores were. And he, he, he knows. 
He knows the dartboard yeah. inside and out. So we use it for math. So I'm throwing that out there for anybody that has kids. Uh, I've been I've been uh, pushing for this for quite a while now, and I've actually spoken to a couple of schools over here in the UK. Um, one of the things that I really, for me personally, what I'd like to do with our YouTube channel is um, take it into some of the schools. And I got the idea because the, one of my boys, my oldest boy, Milo, um, one of his teachers pulled me to one side one evening and said, look, he's, he's struggling with his maths a bit. And I sort of thought, okay, not a problem. So when he got home, um, after tea every night, before we'd done the washing up, I say to him, 10 minute game of darts with daddy. And I made him do the scoring. I made him work it all out. And he actually started really enjoying playing the darts. And also he started learning the out shots, learning what the doubles, the trebles meant and everything. And a month or two later, I was in the school playground and the same teacher come out and said, don't know what you've done, but he's brilliant. He's, he's excelling at maths now. And, um, it was simply down to the darts and I've spoken to a couple of teachers to try and see if we can come up with some sort of plan to take it into some schools and just get the kids involved with it really. Yeah. I think the problem is, do you put a sharp object in a child? Yeah. Head? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, they'll start throwing them at each other or, you know, so it could be an issue. Speaking of sharp objects, steel tip or soft tip, which is your favorite and do you play both? I play both. I, I don't know if you can see behind me. I've got my, my boards up. Um, I play, obviously, us at DPTV uh, with the, the, the mysterious Dart Wolf uh, gave away a lot of Nexus Dart boards at the beginning of lockdown to keep people playing darts and keeping in touch with people. So I'm playing quite a lot on that. And I'm, I've started to get into the game, the cricket that you guys play. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden now, I fancy myself as a bit of a soft tip player. I'm like, right, get me over in the States. I want to play some of this cricket. I like it. Um, but still, for me, always darts, darts is this one behind me here, the steel tip, really. You know, that's that's the game that obviously it all started with. So. Well, you guys should do a, a little cricket thing on DPTV and just, uh, um, you know, bring in some Americans and play some cricket. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it really is a fun game. I go online on the Nexus and I love it when people invite me because sometimes I'm a bit too shy to invite people to a game. So when I get invited by people, I, I love it. And, you know, I mean, I've played, I've got some, there was a guy, I, don't, I can't remember his name now, but there was a guy, he was from America and he challenged me on the Nexus to a game of cricket and he absolutely thrashed me. But I loved it. I was like, right, I need to play him all the time. I'm going to keep playing him till I beat him. I want to play him, you know, but I haven't seen him lately on there. Um, but I love it. I think it's a brilliant game. Yeah, there, there, there are some really good cricket players here. Now, don't ask them to play Steel Tip or 501 because we don't know how to add, subtract, any of that yeah. stuff. But we can play cricket. So <laughs> um, I'm curious about the Nexus board because over here, like, they're still on back order. We can't get our hands on them. I should have bought one when they first came out. Um, I had gotten into the, the grand boards. Um, yeah. So I'm waiting for them to show back up so I can buy one. What's the Nexus board like? Because everybody asks me, they want me to review one, and I'm like, I can't get my hands on one. What are yeah, they? I mean, well, we 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 gave away a lot, and um, and uh, they kind of back. I think they're sort of nearly sorted now because they did have this massive backlog uh, at Target. Um, I mean, I I've only I haven't played on a grand board, um, so I can't really compare it. I've seen them online on YouTube clips and seen people on Twitter with them, but I've never actually seen one in the flesh. But the Nexus board, I mean, it, it links up to your TV. I think your grand boards do that as well, don't they? Mm -hmm. yep. um, but obviously you've got the built-in camera on the board as well. I don't know if a grand board has that, does it? Or No, it doesn't. You have to you know, use a webcam. Yeah, so really, I mean, they kind of, I think there are a lot of similarities between the two, but the Nexus, you've kind of got it all in one. You've got your little TV screen already built in the board. You've got your camera and everything. So it is as simple as turn on, go in a lobby, see who's online, invite, play. And you, you can talk to each other uh, through microphones as well. So you can chat away whilst you're playing with each other. I mean, I've played, I haven't played it for a few days, but I've played guys in uh, Belgium, uh, Germany, 
obviously here in the UK, over there in America. There was a guy in Canada I played the other day as well. And, and literally it was like they were on the phone. It was so clear, like we're talking now, just clear and brilliant. So I was really impressed nice. with it, really. Yeah, I've enjoyed playing the, um, um, now I want to say Nexus. Now I'm getting everything out of here. I got to look at it real quick. The grand board, um, because of that interaction with other people. Yeah. But, um, you know, some people don't have the camera or they've only got, you know, they'll set a camera up on their board and you can't really see them and interact. So that's why I want to get the Nexus and try it out, you know. Yeah. So, um, so real quick as we kind of, like I say, land the plane as we're coming coming out of this, um, Dawson Michelle, uh, he's my next guest on Monday. He, of course, was playing in the PDC. He stepped away from darts for a little while. Did you ever get the opportunity to meet Dawson um, while he was playing on the PDC? No, actually, he's one of the ones that's evaded me. Sorry, so it would have been quite good if I'd have said, oh, yeah, yeah, he's great. But no, he's one of the guys that have, uh, has evaded me. I saw, did I see on, uh, I saw on his social media, he's he's been getting in shape, though. I think yes. he put something on Twitter the other day, like his body transformation and things. So he's obviously getting ready for something and a big return, maybe. So I'm hoping we're going to talk a little bit about it. My understanding is he's he's done for now. He's becoming a lawyer. He's doing video games. He's got a Twitch channel. But I think he still has the bug. I think it's there. I mean, once you play, yeah. you can't just totally give it up. So I mean, I remember when he first kind of turned up on the scene, they were kind of saying this kid could be like a proper contender, like one of the top, top players. And maybe, I don't know, maybe he found it hard to get there because some guys, it, it's a hard graph to get to the top. You can have all the natural ability in the world and People can say you're going to be number one and you're going to be a top player, but to actually get there and do it is hard, isn't it? And perhaps maybe he just thought, you know what, I'd rather do me other things. So, yeah, and he's a he's a young kid, so I mean, mm. you know, Peter did the same thing, step away yeah. for a while, you know, maybe exactly. come back in ten years and crush it. You never know. Yeah. So yeah. So, well, Adam, it's been a huge pleasure to have you on. I could sit here and chat darts with you. For the next couple hours, get Gavin in. We could probably sit here for 24 hours yeah. and just talk darts because I love to talk darts. Um, I'll, have to, I'll have to have a chat with Gavin and see if we can get him to uh, come on. And he, yeah, he'll, he'll, have he'll, he'll be bouncing off the walls. He's crazy. So. So, that's cool. <laughs> um, so um, if you want to just give a little splash for darts, Planet TV, even though everybody knows it, and if anybody wanted to find you specifically on social media, where could they find you? Yeah, I mean um, – Obviously, we're we're on Instagram and Twitter as Darts Planet uh, TV. Um, we've also got a Facebook page, Darts Planet TV. Obviously, we've got the YouTube channel. I'm more on the Twitter, and I'm Southpaw180 on Twitter, so you guys can find me on there um, and give us a follow if you like. I try I try and put something funny every day on there, but it doesn't always happen. But, but yeah. Um, well, again, thanks for thanks for being on, Adam. And you guys check out Darts Planet TV. It's a phenomenal YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed, make sure you guys go over there and subscribe. They're putting out some really great videos. Adam's doing really nice reviews uh, on product, and so I enjoy watching what you guys are doing as well as you know they've got some really cool. Just they're in the darts community, so they're I mean they're literally like Adam said, he's down the street from Peter Wright. Um, they've got a great offering because of their location and their joy and love for darts. If you haven't ever seen someone get crazy about darts, you think I'm nuts about it, watch Gavin. Um, <laughs> he's He would literally jump on top of the couch and get all crazy like Tom Cruise over darts. So yeah. guys, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging in. Don't forget to check out Shot Darts, um, you know, shotdarts.com. Of course, they're sponsoring and magic wear for your wonderful jersey needs. And like I mentioned, Monday morning, eight o'clock Pacific Standard Time, Dawson Michelle will be on. We're going to talk darts. We're going to talk lawyerism and we're going to talk video games. And I'm sure we're going to talk a little bit about physique and getting into shape because he's been doing that lately. Adam, thanks again for being on. Really appreciate it. Um, I'll be seeing you on YouTube and hopefully we can do this again. Yeah. Thank you very much for having me. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. All right. Thanks everybody. We'll see you guys on Monday. Have a great weekend.